all across the UK, more and more land has been given back to nature. Farmers are putting away their ploughs, gardeners are putting away their mowers, and just letting nature do what nature does best. This is a, an approach to nature conservation which is often called wilding or rewilding. And essentially it's a passive way of managing the landscape. You take your hands off, you go with nature. Essentially it's a way of restoring habitats, a way of uh, expanding ecosystems, and a way of allowing nature to return. Kind of struck me, what if we did this to the church? What if we rewilded the church? What if we took our hands off and instead of absorbing people in centralized programs, instead orientated them the other way around and say, what does God want for you in your local context? What has he created you to be? What passions has he put in your heart? How does he want to use you to connect with those who don't know Jesus? Maybe it's time to rewild the church. There are loads of great examples of wilding that you can find uh, on your doorstep. I'm here in Watts Wood, which is in Lincolnshire. And uh, not many years ago, the landscape used to look like this, really heavily ploughed agricultural land. And then after a few years, it started to grow. People let nature do what nature wants to do. There was an intentional planting as well. People put things in, pioneer species, which would help accelerate the process. And of course, what also happened was that seeds blew in and took root and grew. And I think this is a great parallel for the church, the wilded church. If we let our hands go, that we allow God to do what he wants to do, that we encourage everyone to join in with his mission. We'll see all sorts of expressions of church emerge. We'll see things that have been dormant in the ground for a long time flourish. We'll see things intentionally planted and we'll also see the Holy Spirit blowing new seed into our areas, new people, new communities and new cultures. So what does the wilded church look like? Well, I think the wilded church is a place that gives room intentionally for seeds to grow. It's a place where you allow every species to flourish according to how it was created to be. It's a space where you allow artists to be artists and attract other artists. It's a space where you allow potters to do what they do best and attract other potters. It's a space where different forms of contextual church emerge. But as leadership, we don't predict or necessarily control the shape that they emerge in. We oversee them, we make sure that they're spiritually healthy, but we allow them to flourish in the way that is best going to spread the kingdom of God. Two and a half thousand years ago, the Israelites were in captivity in Babylon. And then among them was a prophet by the name of Isaiah. And one day God spoke to him, gave him a vision, and said to him, go and speak to your people and reassure them. And in Isaiah 41, we read of that. And God said, the poor and needy search for water, but there is none. Their tongues are parched with thirst, but I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into springs. I will put in the desert the cedar and the acacia, the myrtle and the olive. I will set junipers in the wasteland, the fir and the cypress together, so that people may see and know 
may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. What we see in that scripture is the return of wildlife, the return of life to landscapes that have been barren for such a long time. And this whole concept of wilding just gives us a lens through which we can understand how the church could be today. You know, we want to see our um, villages and our communities restored. We want to see living water flowing through them. And we're not going to do that just on Sunday mornings. It's going to take a whole load of creator-driven expressions of contextual church. And it all starts with each and every one of us lifting our hands in prayer and just asking God, God, what are you up to in my context? Why have you put me here? What is it that you wanted me to join in with? When you wild the church, not only do you see new things emerge, but occasionally you also see ancient things, ancient ways in which people through many generations have been praying and worshipping God and petitioning him for their local communities. Sometimes these things can give us inspiration as to how we too can engage with everything from commerce right the way through to healthcare and ways in which we can set healthy daily rhythms of prayer and worship in and for our communities. So how do you wild a church? Well, I really think it all starts in prayer. Gather people from your community or your village, or it might be your local context. You know, gather your musicians, your artists, your potters, whatever it might be, and just get them together and pray. And it might be helpful to pray in four different ways. First of all, pray up. Just thank God for who he is, for his character, for his nature. Thank him for Jesus. Thank you for his forgiveness over your life, for his daily provision, for his care. Thank him for friends and family and all the good things in your lives. And then secondly, pray outwards. Pray for your context and your community, for your schools, for your libraries, for your doctor surgeries, whatever it might be. Just give thanks for them and ask God to bless them. And then thirdly, pray for each other. Pray for all of the stuff that needs dealing with. Pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Pray to be full of his life and his vision. And then fourthly, just ask God some questions. God, what are you doing in my context, in my community, and how can I join in?